Jinx. I was laughing at something I saw on Instagram. Okay. Steph Curry, we all know that he is not playing. He is hurt. He's not playing for the Warriors. The Warriors are losing a ton of games in a row. It's a bad stretch for the Warriors. But guess what Steph Curry is doing on Instagram? I don't know. What is he doing? He was in full face paint as a mime. And I'm like, Steph, what are we doing here? There's a doing literal what? picture of him dressed as a mime. It was some kind of product placement or some kind of ad. I don't know. I didn't read the caption, but I was like, Steph, don't you think you're above this? Like, couldn't you get any other <laughs> advertisements where you're not dressing like a mime? I guess this is a crypto exchange that he's promoting. I feel like if you're Steph Curry, you have plenty of money. You can pick and choose. They must be paying him a lot because if I'm going to dress up like a mime, like I'm Marcel Marceau with with my white paint on and my striped shirt and my my little French hat, and I'm going to be a mime or whatever he's doing, you're going to have to pay me some cash. I don't think that's a good look. Well, maybe he got paid in crypto, but the thing is just the optics aren't good. Like your team's losing, you're not playing, and then I see you on Instagram dressed as a mime. Like, come on, bro. It's like, <laughs> hey, are you worried about your team? Is Steph upset? Is he in the gym like trying to get better? Mm. Complete silence. He's just making hand motions. No, he's practicing being a mime right now. He'll get back to basketball eventually, but but Steph's really into miming right now. <laughs> I don't know. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, no, is this some new trend in the NBA? Because every time I look up, the NBA players have on some kind of wacky outfit and call it fashion. Like, you've seen some of these outfits, right? Oh, it's usually sure. Russell Westbrook, Kyle Kuzma in the famous oversized pink sweater. So my first instinct was like, good God, fashion has really gotten out of hand. I was just going to say that. I see Kyle Kuzma all the time in pictures because I'm right here in D.C. And of course, the Wizards are everywhere when it comes to NBA basketball. I just hope miming doesn't become a thing. Like in a year, six months, we'll probably be talking about the new miming trend on TikTok. Oh, my God. Pray for the country. And one <laughs> last final bit on Kyle Kuzma. Did you see the photo shoot where he was modeling the cherry blossom uniforms, which looked quite nice? But he didn't have shoes on. I was like, why oh. is he barefoot walking around D.C.? I did not see that. That's <laughs> gross. I don't know about you, but I don't want to walk around shoeless in any metropolitan area. It's not really specific to D.C., but in any, really anywhere. I don't like walking outside in any city. Like, I'll put on a nice suit. I'll look great. No shoes needed for this guy. Let me get all the gunk on my feet possible. Yeah, Gross. It was an odd anomaly that I, you know, somebody pointed out. I was like, wow, he isn't wearing shoes. So another cool trend in the NBA that I don't understand. Well, let's dive into the NBA. This is the Daily Tip presented by BetMGM. I'm Chelsea Messenger. He's Michael Jenkins. Coming up in three minutes if the Bulls are going to win, they got to win now. Let's dive into the NBA slate right now with Shea. Let's start with Brooklyn. The Nets hosting Milwaukee. Nets a short one and a half point favorite at home. Total 238 and a half. 730 Eastern time is the first tip. The Bucks have won five of their last seven, both straight up and against the number, coming off a 118-116 win at Philadelphia on Tuesday, where Giannis again had 40 points, while Kevin Durant is also coming off a 40-point performance against the Pistons on Tuesday. Kyrie's third game in Brooklyn will be tonight. Sunday against the Hornets, he had 16. Tuesday against the Pistons, he had 24, Jinx. Oh, man. This is a tough one. As a road dog, the Bucks are 3-8 and eight on the season. That's second worst in the NBA. As a home favorite, the Nets are 4-23-1. and one. That is worst in the NBA. I think I probably lean Bucks. They're 11-3 and three since losing to the Nets back in February. Lost by three in that game. I'm not going to bet this one. I just want to watch this game because I think it's going to be fantastic. But if I'm picking a side, I'd probably just grab the points with Milwaukee. I think it's going to be a really close game. It's also nice that it's on TNT. We don't have to suffer through Lakers-Mavs because they actually picked the right game to broadcast. But I've been back and forth on this one. Initially, I thought Bucks because we saw them in the same situation, I believe, against the Sixers. Short underdogs and it was a big win that went down to the wire and Giannis was huge in that one with a, a last second block and my goodness has he been good over his last eight games averaging 34.3 points and 11.8 rebounds I don't think the Nets have anybody to stop him like I don't think Andre Drummond is going to slow down Giannis here but looking at that last game it was really interesting to me because I was looking for anomalies. I'm thinking, 
oh, well, maybe the Bucks had a bad night shooting against the Nets last time out because the Nets beat them on the road, 126-123. But the Bucks had an incredible night of shooting, shot 52% from the field and 42% from the three-point line. Bobby Portis led all scorers with 30 points, so maybe it wasn't an anomaly. I think we see the stars shining but for both teams in this one. I think it's going to be a good game for props. I'm not sure. I don't think I'm placing any money on a side, but I would lean towards the Bucks just because I think they are playing the better basketball right now. Bucks have been really good in the spot. Giannis is playing like the MVP candidate. He is year in and year out. And I'm rooting for them because I enjoy chaos. And I think that the Nets really having to struggle in the play-in tournament, potentially missing the playoffs altogether, by far the funniest outcome of the regular season. So I'm rooting for the Bucks, and that's the way I would lean in this game. Clippers at Bulls. The Bulls a three and a half point home favorite, total 223 and a half. And the Clippers have the second worst road record against the number, just 15, 22, and two, but snapped their five game losing streak on Tuesday night against the Jazz. Of course, in Paul George's return, where boy, did he look good 34 points in 30 plus minutes in his return. The Bulls have lost six of their last eight, both straight up and against the number, Chelsea. This is probably a buy low spot on the Clippers. That was my first instinct when you see all of these trends and all of these numbers that are for the course of the season. And these are games when they didn't have Paul George. And I thought maybe there would be some rust involved with Paul George, but what a night, 34 points and shooting 66% from three-point land uh, against this um, against the Jazz. And the Bulls are not great defensively either. So I think I'll probably take the points with the Clippers and hope that it's a buy low spot on the Clippers here. Yeah, I'm on the Clippers as well. You pretty much have to throw out any sort of trends with the trip with the Clippers that you've seen thus far because they're a completely different team now. Now they have their best player back. He did not miss a beat. He looked brilliant against the Jazz the other night. Normally, I'd be all over the Bulls because this is what the Bulls do, right? They struggle against very good teams, but they usually cover against poor teams. But now the Clippers have a completely different makeup. I think you're right. You're buying low on L.A. Paul George, if he continues to play like we saw in that first game, I think there's value on L.A. So give me the points of the Clippers. I'm also going to be on the Clippers. In fact, I really, really like this play. One trend I don't think you need to throw out here is the Bulls are terrible. 1-11 straight up against the top four teams in the Eastern Conference. Very bad against top teams with records over, above 600, both the East and West, 2-18 and 18 straight up. I know that doesn't apply to the Clippers, but that's because they didn't have Paul George. I think with Paul George involved, the Clippers are one of those best teams in the league caliber type teams. I think they have an excellent head coach. I think this is a very bad spot to get the Bulls as a home favorite. I'm all over the Clippers tonight. Lakers in Utah to take on the Jazz. And the Jazz, an 11 and a half point favorite, total 225 and a half. LeBron is out. He went back to LA for treatment. Anthony Davis is expected back on Friday. So the Lakers will be shorthanded here. Anybody want to just lay the points with the Jazz? This is the same spread, by the way, we saw the other night when the Mavericks were able to cover 11 and a half against the Lakers. Ugh, I have no interest in betting on this one. I don't have any interest in playing these games where the Stars are out like I don't know what we're going to get from the Lakers I don't even know how to play a trend in this one because it looks like the over has been hot for the Lakers but the under has been hot for Utah especially at home 34 41 and one over under record so don't have a good read it will be a pass for me I mean the Jazz have been bad recently 0-5 yep. against the number in their last five but the Lakers have essentially quit did you see that video a guy went through the Lakers Twitter feed all season because after every game, win or lose, they put up a graphic of the score and a picture of one of their players. And in zero, zero of the losses do they ever put up a picture of LeBron. They always put up someone like Malik Monk or someone. When they win, it's always LeBron or AD. But when they lose, it's always like a bench player or a guy who's not a star. Pretty funny. I actually would lay it with the Jazz if I were betting this game. But it's such a monster number. I'm not going to play it. The Lakers are just quit. I'm going to lay it with the Jazz. The Lakers shorthanded uh, on the other day. were unable to cover a 12-point spread. Lost that one, 128-110. 
I just think when they're shorthanded, they're one of the worst teams in basketball. We've like seen that fairly empirically. I think the Jazz are one of the better teams, even though they've been mired in a bit of a tough stretch. So I'm going to lay this 11 and a half with the Jazz. I feel quite comfortable with that. 76ers on the road in Detroit, and the 76ers a 10 and a half point favorite over the Pistons on the road, total 222 and a half. Coming off that loss to the Bucks, Giannis blocked Joel Embiid in the final seconds, but the Pistons have lost three straight and nine of their last 11 after getting hot for a little while. Eight and three against the number in that span, though, while Cade Cunningham is averaging 22 and a half points per game in March, Chelsea. Numbers too big here, I think, for the Pistons. Just based on these trends, Detroit has been a cover machine, 15-2 and 2 against the spread in their last 19 games. So when we're talking about a double-digit spread here, I think the only sabotage factor is the Sixers have been pretty good against bad teams. Usually they struggle with the top teams in the league. But for me, just based on the trends alone, probably got to go Pistons here. Same thing. This number is way too big. Pistons plus 10 and a half. The Sixers will win this game. They should win this game. But they're sort of, sort of figuring out how to implement James Harden more effectively into that lineup. In fact, he's talked with the team. What can I do to be more effective, to have a more positive impact on this team? But you mentioned the trends. Overall, the Pistons are one of the best covering teams in the NBA. They're 41, 33, and 2 against the number all season long. They've been red hot recently. Cunningham is finally being the player they thought they were getting when they drafted him. So give me the Pistons. I'm looking back quickly trying to gather when those losses came against the number for the Pistons. Years in all three losses against the number, they were actually favorites. Every time right. they've been a dog in this stretch, they have covered. So this is a spot where we've seen the Pistons get double digits recently and cover those spreads, Celtics, Nets, rather comfortably. So I, I agree if you're going to have to bet this game, which you might not want to because who the hell wants to watch it, um, I would bet the Pistons. And some good information to know, two teams on the back end of a back-to-back -back tonight, and they're playing each other. It is the Cavs and the Hawks. This is the Daily Tip presented by BetMGM. I'm Chelsea Messner. He's Michael Jenkins. Jakes, it's time. We've got a couple minutes left. Well, Why don't we give you uh, 60 seconds to talk uh, about the NHL? One minute minor. Guys, you feel that sting on your skin? That's a heat wave. That's what happens when you put together two straight wins on the ice, and now we're going for three. We're headed north of the border to Toronto, where the Leafs are hosting the Jets. And what's in Toronto? How about the shops at Eaton Center, where you can grab a cup of coffee at Tim Hortons and enjoy a good hockey game? Of course, we got a game to be played. Leafs minus 225 on the money line. Jets plus 185 on the money line. The total set at six and a half already. This was six when I woke up this morning, and you can see why. Neither team will have their starting goalie between the pipes. So we get Eric Comrie for the Jets, Eric Colgren for the Leafs. Ah, the two Erics. Sounds like a failed sitcom on CBS. We should expect a ton of goals. Jets averaging 3.6 over their last five. Leafs have scored 10 in their past two. In addition, the over is hit in 20 of the last 27 games between these two squads. I don't like six and a half. I'm going to lay the juice and go over six goals. That's minus 135 at BetMGM. Let's make it three straight and get on another heater. All right, Jenks. So mm -hmm. let's take a vote. Is two okay. a streak? If you win no. two bets in a row, is it a streak? If you win two bets on the same night, is it a sweep? Or is three the number in which you have to hit for it to be a sweep or a streak? I think it's three, isn't it? I like to say two, but two is just kind of putting a couple together. Three means, okay, now you're on to something. So I think it's three. What about you? I think so too, but I'm not sure why. Like, why is three so much better than two? Like, especially when you're betting on games every day. <laughs> I guess that's true. When you say, I, I, I think it's just the way it sounds. Like two game winning streak or two game losing streak. It's okay. Right. Te technically, yes. It just, it doesn't sound right because it's just two games. But three, it's like, okay, now you're headed somewhere. Two is kind of like running in place. Three means, all right, now I'm, now I'm headed the right direction. Why are things so much better in threes? Have you heard this rule? Like when you are listing things, it sounds better for some reason to list things in threes. I think it's because three is obviously a more significant number. When you're listing things, it's like giving a reason for something. Well, if you can get the more reasons you can give for something, it means the more you can justify it. So if you can only come up with a couple reasons, it's like, all right, you're going to give me more than that. But three, four, five, it's like, oh. all right, now, <laughs> now you got an argument there.
I think it's one of those weird like psychology things where it just sounds better. And I'm not sure what the science is behind it. But, you know, we see the rule of three in a lot of things. And here's hoping we don't see, you know, the celebrity deaths one this year, because that's the other rule of three conspiracy theory that we see out there. Well, that was a thrilling segment.